Hi, this is Nathan. We're just getting ready for a time of humor, excitement, and analysis. So why don't you get the whole family together and join us for another episode of the Wad Fam Chalk Pod? They wanted to use all of George's name. They could have gone with Gargoyle Brace. <laughs> <laughs> that is, I mean, kind of fitting for t- tradition. Or, or, cerebral yo-gag. Now, now that's a pastor. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Wad Fam Chalk Pod. I'm Dylan Weaver. And I'm Andrew Sabo. And uh, we're here to talk about episode 289, A Call for Reverend Jimmy. Not Reverend Pastor. Not Reverend Pastor. Call back. Call back. A call back for Reverend Pastor. (laughs) Very nice, Dylan. I'm really glad we started the podcast that way. <laughs> As opposed to our normal information we give out. Yeah, no, 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 no. We gotta, we gotta, we, we're, we are a jokes first podcast, yeah, Andrew. Yes, yes, yes. Everyone who listens knows it's, it's this. It's like tiramisu. It's just layer after layer. <laughs> so this is, uh, this is an episode that first aired on November 19th of 1994 which was a little over a month after the episode we covered last week. There were actually, there were three episodes that aired in between those two, and we have covered all of them. The Twilight Zone and... And both Tom for Mayors. Oh, okay, okay. We're in, like, the Changing Times album, we have covered, or, like, it's not even, because Twilight Zone isn't even on Changing Times, but Mm -hmm. there is, like, a six episode, seven episode run where we have covered every episode. Yeah, which no, is that, really funny because it's not like yeah, it's it, been across several arcs, <laughs> right? It's not like you know. Obviously, we had a twelve episode arc where we covered every episode. It's called Battle Lines, but yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. that's different than this, where we just happen to cover like seven episodes in a row. It's just a dynamite era of Odyssey. Honestly, yeah. I guess. Yeah. I mean, it's just. I think, yeah, I think recording this show for as long as we've made it has solidified the fact that not all eras are created equal as far as oh, at least how not. much i enjoy them and like albums like this <laughs> album right now oh, blind <clears throat> what i don't know andrew um where, where were we <laughs> where were we so yeah so this this is off um the album the changing times again mm-hmm. it's track eight mm-hmm. um for those of you listening alone at home on CDs, I don't know. <laughs> I, it, whatever. I, it, we, we, we say it every week. We're going to keep doing it. But it is like, For how us. relevant <laughs> is this information? <laughs> this is the first episode that we are covering here that is not written by Paul McCusker. It was directed by Paul McCusker, but it was written by Marshall Younger. And how did you feel about this episode in, in the... Because we, we talk about the writers and how much they impact the show and stuff. So, like... Do you feel, yeah, how'd you feel about this episode right off the bat? Pretty good. Honestly, yeah, I thought it was pretty enjoyable. It was not too heavy, but not like I liked what it had to say. It strikes a good line. I don't feel like... The moral wasn't bad. So like maybe the, yeah, actually the moral has some great points. Yeah. I think like, right, when we talk about like character inconsistencies between writers and whatnot, like maybe... The argument that could be levied towards this episode is that Jimmy is aged up a bit and Donna is aged down a bit. Yeah. But it's not so much to where it feels like it doesn't ring true. Like, it's still, like, yeah, I I wasn't listening going like, oh, man, Donna is acting like a child. I'm like, no, this is the correct response. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Donna's acting like an awkward teenager, which... Right. And Jimmy's acting like an over eager tween yeah yeah so so i think we're fine is he a tween but i don't know if he's is he 13 I, yeah i think he's definitely 13 okay. at this point i don't I, I like i liked it i liked it as well honestly well we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get into it and and uh yeah tell you exactly what i liked and didn't like about it but of course as far as marshall younger is concerned i yeah definitely think he could have done a lot worse yeah no that's 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 fair um cast wise we have uh donald long returning as jack davis Mm -hmm. Um, we've talked about him in the past um 
and we have Cheryl Henderson as Ms. Jeffries. The overeager Which, church congregation member. Yeah, she's definitely Miss Jeffries, right? Yeah. The, the the wiki credits her as Ms., but I heard Miss. I heard Miss as well, and honestly, with how catty she is, I'm not surprised she's single, because she's just out there pressuring young people. <laughs> yeah. Also, the... So, the wiki links like links to a lot of people's um imdb pages Mm -hmm. weirdly for um cheryl henderson who is in one episode of adventures in odyssey like this is it this is Mm -hmm. the only part she's ever had the her imdb link takes you to cheryl anderson who's like a person who's been in stuff and i don't think is the person we're talking about so we're just going to ignore the wiki that's fine i am okay with it so and uh if we're wrong let us know yeah i mean right it could be a situation (laughs) where she has both names oh but it plot twist but it seems unlikely yeah so but you know it could be a kathy waranga kathy buchanan situation or a uh jenny long jenny other one yeah, what, 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 what? I don't know. Remember when we found out that Ariel Winter was on this show? Yeah. That was crazy. Oh, J- Jenny Mullen. Ah, was thank you, Dylan. Yeah, I'm happy, happy to help. Well, let's say you re- re-roll the promo, Dylan. Is that, is that what we do now? I think so. Yeah, let's roll the promo. Coming up on the next Adventure in Odyssey, Jimmy Barclay wonders if his dad's move into the ministry should be followed by his own. It's pastoral pandemonium for the Barclay family, especially when Tana finds herself the target of her dad's sermon illustrations. Learn more next time on Adventures in Odyssey. That's delightful. It's pastoral pandemonium. I'm so glad that that stuck out to you because it did for me too. <laughs> it's pastoral pandemonium here. <laughs> oh, that was delightful, man. Mm. Was that it, pan flute? What, what, what was? It was probably just synth. But. It was synth. Yeah, synth pan flute though. <laughs> it was fine. We yeah. like it. <laughs> it was very enjoyable, and it does it does make you wonder why when they've made something as funny and wacky as those that they would just be like i know we're just gonna make them normal all the time and they're all gonna sound the same i mean i'm sure it saves money and time i was gonna say it probably saves money time and also is a better advertisement for the show yeah well but that's so much less fun it is less fun but also like it's 2020 where where are people even hearing radio promos on the wiki (laughs) right that's exactly (laughs) exactly so, uh, yeah, this is an episode. Um, it begins with a Chris intro, mm-hmm. which I forgot was an option. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, wait, why don't we always do this? Especially when Wit's not around right. anymore. <laughs> or Tom. Yeah. Like, why, th- 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 this is a great option. <laughs> and plus, it means I get to send Nathan a longer script. It's true. We love we love hearing Nathan's sweet, sweet voice. It's so much lower than mine. His, his voice is... Whew. Dizzying. Andrew feels the way about Nathan's voice that most of you listeners feel about Andrew's voice. Is that true? I don't know. You you get voice compliments. I know. No and one it's else so does. Weird. No one else. No does. one else. I don't. The get mysterious voice compliments third man compliments. who doesn't talk. He never gets compliments. Well, I, I think we we decided at a certain point that we are the same person, just doing yeah, the ventriloquist <laughs> act. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Moving really fast. <laughs> Dylan is so good at editing. I am. I'm. I'm. I'm great. You guys have. You guys have definitely noticed how good I am at editing, right? Oh, oh yeah. There's never any awkward cuts. Hey, <laughs> I mean, it's just like a conversation, and uh, I'm just a tremendously awkward person at times. So it feels real. Anyway, yeah. So you said that this episode starts with Jimmy and Lawrence yeah. uh, after church. Basically, and like this episode is all kind of about um, Jimmy and Donna like reacting to um, their dad being a pastor. And like we kind of, you know, get into the dynamic of like the church microculture dynamic where you have like a pastor and pastor's kids. Like this is the pastor's kid episode. Mm-hmm. And it's not bad. 
Um, no, it's it's in fact good. Some yeah. may argue. Yeah, we have the uh, basically they're they're hanging out and um, well, I I forget her name, but the a lady from the congregation comes up and starts talking to Jimmy in the way. Wait, that, wait, how could you forget the name of Miss Jeffries? That is, yeah, we literally did just talk about it. <laughs> My short term memory is astoundingly poor <laughs> also i forgot the name of miss jeffries i looked at my notes oh thank you <laughs> thank you for thank you for uh making me feel less but before miss jeffries shows up we have to talk about lawrence rearranging the signage i missed that wait why did lawrence rearrange the sign so the sign like the the sign outside of the church that said preaching this sunday George Barkley and he and uh, Lawrence rearranged it to say preaching this Sunday large rag boy. <laughs> that's actually really funny. Thank you for I agree. that's hilarious. <laughs> it's great. Also, he's how did like, Lawrence he's, not get in more trouble for that? I don't know. He's like, I had a couple letters left over though. <laughs> I'm just specifically imagining... a C. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's no. There's no. Uh, there's no C in th- large rag boy. Nope. Not unless you get really inventive. Large rag boik. <laughs> yeah, or just, I was thinking, like, cutting the letter in half and using it to make another letter. <laughs> well, I mean, presumably. <laughs> it's either that or you just leave it in the bottom and there's just, you know, large rag boy and then a C. Yeah. Those large songs. rag boy what a good bit to come in on the show honestly i thank you I for love... bringing that up because i completely missed that i, just, I was distracted. i love the writer that's like we're gonna have lawrence rearrange stuff let's rearrange the letters in george barkley find something funny large rag boy <laughs> but it doesn't even use all the letters but it's so yeah but it but it, it still accomplishes oh. what you need oh yeah it's and hilarious. like Oh man, like I won. Large rag boy. <laughs> Can we sell large rag boy shirts? We could definitely. <laughs> I mean, we could definitely sell rags that we just put rubber bands and googly eyes on and sell them as large rag boys. Also, isn't that just a towel? A large, large rag boy? <laughs> but it's a boy. I call, you know, inanimate objects boys a lot, so. Ah. I call them all girls. Make of that whatever you wish. That's why we ha- we should have a podcast. We balance <laughs> each other out pretty well. <laughs> oh my god! Large rag boy. Large rag boy. Twenty twenty four. That's who I'm voting for. <laughs> when politics have left you high and dry, we look to large rag boy. Yeah, dude. I think this episode is coming out post inauguration. Yo, (laughs) what is it like? (laughs) Is there a civil war? Is there... Are we still afraid there's going to be a civil war? (laughs) Uh, The future is uncertain. Mm, And full of surprises. Mm. So uh, So then Miss Jeffries comes up. Then Miss Jeffries comes up and is like, oh, he's a great pastor. And Miss Jeffries, I get it. Like, she has to be the entire conflict of this episode as far as like this is a s- miserable conversation to hear yes her talking to jimmy being like oh aren't you gonna be a pastor like pastors running the family and and all this stuff and and basically telling jimmy that he would be a great pastor and that's kind of his duty right and that's i mean i'm not a pastor's kid so i can't say that somebody's ever done that to me but i feel like that's not entirely off base for pastors kids no to hear no stuff it like does that. it does feel kind of correct yeah it's a bummer especially that it's coming at this point yeah like it's if he so... was a kid like if he was really little i'd be like okay that makes sense yeah or if he was considerable i don't know it's just it's it's really tough because we have no existing relationship with this person. But, like, at, at the same token, like, that's kind of how the church works sometimes. Like, I mean, I've seen, yeah, like, people that are completely, you know, not personally related going up to the pastor and talking to them. It's mildly surprising that she's coming up to Jimmy, who's a child. Um, 
and you know she's alone and telling him that he's gonna be a pastor someday yeah <laughs> this isn't actually it's getting worse the more i think about it <laughs> um and then <laughs> yeah yeah, so my note is like, is that is that actually how it is for pastors' kids? And and I'm I'm inclined to think that it's not entirely off base. Uh, and um, we get Lawrence then, kind of saving Jimmy. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's fair. I am sorry that I have been so disconnected. I am looking up anagrams for Jimmy Barkley because I wanted to see. Oh, if he was the pastor, what could they make him? Best one I've got. Uh, icy marbly jam. Icy marbly jam. <laughs> <laughs> icy marbly jam okay it doesn't sound actually that bad is marble jam like two different kinds of jam mixed i have together? no idea yes i think i think it but has there's to like be. what kind of jam could you marble or maybe we've also got uh climb j mary now that's an <laughs> idea <laughs> <laughs> which go- plays off my next note, which is, I think Lawrence has a crush on Jimmy's mom. I, I don't know, man. I don't know. We, I don't know. We need, we need a better segue back in because I have to cut all this. <laughs> this is so bad. Clammy Rib J. <laughs> <laughs> Clammy Rib J. <laughs> now, now preaching. Clammy Rib J. Oh. Uh... So, yeah, the whole thing with Miss Jeffries asking Jimmy when he's going to start preaching is just, like, I don't like, I don't like Miss Jeffries. She's, like, church busybody yeah. is the way she's portrayed. Yeah. She is, she sends Jimmy into the spiral seemingly unknowingly, but it still is just, like, it's gross. Like, I don't mm-hmm. like the, like, oh, yeah, like, your dad's been preaching for two weeks. When are you going to start? Yeah, it doesn't really fit in, because he did just start. <laughs> I mean, right, it, like, in universe time, it might have been a month, but still. Yeah. It feels well, for a weird, stranger, and I don't like he... the expectations that she's putting on this child, and... Yeah. yeah, I don't know, it's one of those things that's just like... Well, it's I... like, it's it's the, it's the stupid, like, the comments that, like, a family friend makes... That are like innocuous, but like are really frustrating. Yeah, so like like the up, like, anytime like you as like a small child had a friend who was female, mm-hmm. it would always be like, "Oh, are you guys like boyfriend?" And it's like, dude, we are like, be two. like yeah, leave me alone, mom. <laughs> I'm busy making out with this eight year old. I'm eight. I uh, know I didn't have my first kiss until I was fourteen. Just so the podcast knows. Yeah. Right. Um, I'm glad you clarified that you were also eight. <laughs> yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I had to do that. Um, uh huh. No, no. But what I that, can. What that comment made me think of was like my dad would like play on the worship team, and people would ask me if I played an instrument, and like right. I play piano, kind of, not really very well. Yeah, I, I used to be good at it, but it was like oh, well, your dad does it, and he's really good at it, so clearly you must be talented, Mm -hmm. too. Why don't you join the worship team? And I'm like, I just like playing sports. Right, or, or like, the the opposite for me, which is, like, my dad having played football in high school. Yeah. But, yeah, just that that thing of, like, oh, like, your father is good at sports, and he works in construction. Like, you should probably do the same. And I'm like, Mm -hmm. no. Have you seen me? I am a pencil. Yeah. yeah. I type on a keyboard. <laughs> that is my that, that is my calling. Yeah, yeah. I, was saying, I don't know how to tell you that you're wrong, but you're you're very you're very misguided as far right. as what you think I'm gonna be doing. And it's just it's the the confidence with which Miss Jeffries says this. Exactly. That is also so disheartening and her inability to read the room and I, yeah. it's just I yeah. just I don't love it. But you know, it's okay. Yeah, say lovey. Uh, so yeah, oh, and she's yeah. She says the best past or the best. So here's a conversation for the episode. Yeah, preacher versus pastor. The show cannot decide. It also is titled Reverend Jimmy, but doesn't <laughs> reference that at all. Hmm. And it might just be them trying to so play pro- to like. <laughs> 
I think of preacher versus pastor as like a regional thing. Yeah. I don't think there's actually different. I just think of like preacher is southern, pastor yeah. is northern. Like Yeah. So so like man. so like it might just be them knowing they're a national show and trying to play to both groups. But it's weird that, like, last episode, they just called the pastor, pastor, the entire thing. Yeah. And then here, they're, like, Miss Jeffrey's quote is, like, the best preachers always run in the family. Everybody thinks so. Let yeah. me put pressure on you, child. <laughs> Let me just... Your dad hasn't even adjusted to this job. Now you need to take it, too. It's yeah, your you're, calling. You're going to be so good at it. It is a weird thing, though, of, and like... you have no choice. <laughs> the... The, like the heritage of like pastors in a family is crazy to me. Yeah. Like, I think it is a thing of like, Oh, like if you grow up around it, you're going to consider it as an option in a way that like other people wouldn't. Yeah. But it is weird how many like influential, like people that like, in my life, like mm -hmm. pastors or youth leaders or whatever also had fathers that did that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and hopefully, I mean, I think, and the church is behind and, and it's been behind and it, hopefully I think it's catching up a little bit, but kind of getting away from the, like, you have to like differentiating individuals within the congregation even though they're like a part of a family or something like that and kind of getting better at understanding that not everybody does the same thing um but like i i experience a lot of pressure within like the church culture of like well if you don't do what your dad did you got to do something else yeah and i was like but I play sports and I don't have time on Sundays and they're like mm, but you're there and I'm like mm, okay <laughs> but yeah. yeah so I it it's very it's very difficult and I'm I'm hoping that the church as a whole is moving away from pressuring young people to to you know take up I guess like hereditary uh occupations and in, in ministry but I don't know. There's also a lot of benefit because they right. can learn so much from right. their parents. That, that's what I was going to say is I don't think, I mean, even just the people I'm thinking of, like, I don't think any of them would say, like, they felt pressured into this position mm -hmm. because of what their parents did or yeah. what their dad did. I'm sure some people do. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure that is an experience. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, like, I think the people who have done it and are still doing it probably got their... We yeah. definitely influence from their father, but not as a, like, feeling of necessity because yeah, of their father. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and, and sometimes, you know, when you're in a community, it can bring out stuff in you that you wouldn't necessarily know. Or, like, manifest, make inherent attributes manifest in a similar way because it was a right. similar environment. So Right, like, like I my one of my brothers works for my dad's construction company. Like, yeah, exactly. That's not a... Yeah, it's not like it was like, oh, son, you must continue on the family business. It was just like, that was a door that was open to him, and he likes the work. Yeah. I never had that, any of it. Because my, my dad never worked for, like, he never had his own business or anything like that. And when he was involved in the church, it was pretty limited. If anything, as far as the church stuff, I had it from my mom, because my mom was super involved. Still is super involved will never not be involved probably i don't know <laughs> jury's still out i could put money on it but i definitely lose it um it, it goes both ways yeah um back to odyssey yeah so so right we jimmy jimmy says to lawrence like do i look like a pastor to you and Jor and lawrence is like sure <laughs> and then and then jimmy's like oh well you also say that my mom looks like Natasha, the diabolical secretary for Destructo. Yes. Which is the best foreshadowing Odyssey has ever done, because Natasha is a combination of Natalie and Tasha, and Tasha was a secretary for the embassy, and that is all connected, right? It's all canon. Phil Lawler was pulling the strings behind it the whole time. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I'm imagining that Phil Lawler is like Oz... Where he just, he, he has this, like, internet presence, then you pull back the curtain, and it's this little tiny person. 
Uh, I am the Oz, the Great and Powerful. Yeah. Is that a Sam Raimi movie? Oz, the Great and Powerful? Doesn't matter. So uh, the next scene is George on the phone. And this whole episode with the planes flying over the house. Uh Uh-huh. Take it away. How do you feel about (laughs) it? (laughs) I'm at a loss for words. (laughs) It's so contrived and nonsensical there's never been like like, okay i guess odyssey has an airport and whatever but like they're they're yeah their excuses there's what there's something happening so they the planes have to reroute and they're flying over their house it is portrayed in this episode as though these planes are flying like 20 feet above This house and like, you know, parking it there and dropping down a ladder and getting refreshments and going back up before they land. You know, air parking. Air parking. (laughs) Classic. It's, yeah, it's really obnoxious. I, I, I don't really get it. I'm sure it's just for the end where we don't get the baby's gender reveal because there's a plane. So, to reference the complete guide... Uh, okay. Yeah, it's exactly for that. Yeah, the ending of a call. We're, we're just gonna we're just gonna get ahead of ourselves. That's fine. I got to talk about it here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the ending. Uh, uh, we got the ending. This is uh, Marshall Yard talking. We got the ending of a call for Reverend Jimmy from the movie Patriot Games. Oh. Paul and I were in his cubicle at Focus trying to figure out how to end the episode. We didn't know if we should reveal the sex of the Barkley baby. So we worked out that the noise of an airplane covers up the answer, which is similar to the way Patriot Games ended. We had so much fun in the process, laughing about our ideas. People in other cubicles around us must have thought we were crazy. With this ending, we had more time to decide whether whether baby Barkley should be a boy or a girl. Gender roles, am I right? No, I'm not going to be that guy. <laughs> it is. That, that's actually really funny, though. And it, also kind of frustrating. <laughs> oh, it, it's extremely frustrating. for well. So, so a couple things this brings up. One, Paul McCusker, not a credited writer on this episode, but they were working on the script together, which answers a question that we've had in the past. At least in this instance. Yeah, now, yeah. Because did direct this episode, but mm-hmm. just the discussion that we have often about like how independent are these, or do they kind of writers room it? Yeah, this feels a little bit one? writers roomy. Mm-hmm. Note number two: the uh, official guide mm-hmm. has this exact same anecdote. However, word for word, except they change the word sex to that of gender. <laughs> Which I think is hilarious. That is actually really <laughs> funny. And, uh, I mean, is that... I don't think that that's more accurate. I mean, I... I gen, if it's, gender it's is the a, same. Like, it's... Well, so gender gender is, like, you know, what you think when you associate stuff with somebody's biological sex. Somebody's, like, biological sex is, like, your chromosomes and stuff like that. Like, you need biological interference to alter your sex. Um, right. But, you know, hypothetically, in 2021, you know, there are people with sex and gender that don't match, obviously. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just, I think it's truly just they didn't want the word sex in the book anymore. Man. Like, I like, hate it when books do that, because as a kid, I always look for the sex <laughs> word. <laughs> I, I had a this. dictionary in third grade that literally I never used it because I didn't need it. But it did have the word sex in it, and I did look it up, like four or five times oh it's like a hunt i mean did, did you never do that with the with like the bible as a kid where you're like ah they said ass <laughs> <laughs> i mean i probably did i don't know to that level i remember when i was reading the seventh harry potter book uh they used the b word and it was the first time that i had ever read a swear word in a book and i was Whoa. in like i don't know i was in elementary school at the time and i was i knew it was coming and I you was knew so it was coming. Like I, yeah, because somebody had Someone told me about. Told you. It. Somebody like had, you gotta read the new Harry Potter book. It they say the B word. Yeah, exactly. Which one you'll have to read to find <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah, and like I would flip ahead in the book just to read the swear word, even though I knew what happened, and it was like it. It was a very climactic ending. You know, she's she's 
she uses said explicit language right before defeating the bad guy or one of the bad guys. So I can I try to excuse it that way, but I don't know, man. You try to excuse it? I think it's fully <laughs> excusable. I think we have. I think if we're going to take issue with J.K. Rowling, that is not the <laughs> issue we take. No, never. Speaking of gender, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh. Uh. Oh boy. Yeah. We we love it. But yeah, it is it is just right. I guess you're right in that like sex is the correct word to talk about. Like we did testing on like we determined the baby's sex. Yeah. But I understand why I like I understand but why they changed it. Vagina, but I and- <laughs> think it's really funny to point out that they changed it. No, it's hilarious. And yeah. Thank you. Thank you for thank you for bringing it up. Yeah. Um and then the other thing I want mm-hmm. to break out about this. And maybe, maybe we, no, uh, I'll hit on it now because we're hitting on all this now. With this ending, we had more time to decide whether the baby Barkley should be a boy or a girl. No. No one said on episode five of this arc, you must say that Mary found out the gender of the baby. Yeah, I was really <laughs> surprised because, like... It kind of came out of nowhere, and there was no build-up to it, except for at the very end when she goes, Oh, and by the way, I got an ultrasound done. Right. And it's weird, because it's like... I don't... There's not really a timeline. Are you trying to instill a timeline? I don't know. Like, if you had just, when the baby was born, said, It's a boy, or it's a girl, no one would have batted an eye. Yeah, exactly. So instead, like, instead you were we like, well, we've, we've <laughs> got to we've gotta say in this episode, like, people want to know, but then we're just going to blur out what they say with an airplane. With really loud airplanes that are really close to the house. That, uh, yeah, we get, and so, then we get Mary talking so on weird. behalf of the baby, and then George talks to the baby. Yeah, and then and, the kids are like, yeah, dad's talking to the baby again. Yeah. Don't worry about the planes. They should be gone by the time you're born. Which I thought was actually genuinely yeah, pretty funny. No, I, I agree. Um, and then this is when George is complaining because he lost somebody to teach Sunday school. Right. And then bum, bum, bum. George wants Jimmy to teach Sunday school. Jimmy's yeah. like, ah, what? Isn't that Lawrence's class? Yeah. The problem is there's like seven Lawrences in that class. Yeah. yeah. Nobody which, wants to teach it. So, so as... As a child listening to this episode, I thought that the problem was that there was a bunch of kids named Lawrence, and so no one wanted to deal with having to differentiate between them. <laughs> they were just really lazy, and they didn't want to make name tags. They were, like, they were like, yeah, the problem is that there's seven Lawrences in that class. And I'm like, yeah, I guess that would be a problem. It would be really hard to, like tell them apart I'm that's Mr. crazy Mason, that there's seven lawrences <laughs> yeah and no <laughs> no, no 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 the point is that there's a bunch of kids who rambunctious. are right rambunctious but that was a fun flashback memory for me to be like oh yeah i thought that that literally meant there was a bunch of kids named lawrence obviously <laughs> and that didn't confuse me no no i was just like oh right of course yeah that that, that would army be army of lawrences <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, uh, so then what? It, is that when it cuts away to Jimmy and Lawrence the next day? Well, so it's it's Jimmy up in yeah it, yeah exactly. It's mm-hmm. Jimmy. He's prepping yeah. for Sunday's class on Monday. Yeah. Lawrence shows up and is like, "What are you? What are you doing?" Yeah. Um, and he's like, "Well, I've got this conco- concordance and a Greek New Testament, and I'm like doing all this research." For this Sunday. It was really funny because he was trying to spit out the word concordance. And I was trying to figure out what he said. But I actually just learned what a concordance is for school, like, recently. Oh, wow. Yeah. They're, um, it's like. I know what a concordance is. Buddy. Oh, you know? Okay, yeah. cool. They also talk about it in this episode, don't they? They do. Uh, they say it's a Greek New Testament. I no, no, no. They, they talk about also a Greek New Testament. Oh, no. Isn't a concordance a list of how many times a word appears in the Bible? More or less. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's okay. like, it's like, hey, here's the like, themes throughout the Bible and where they're referenced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like most, a characters. lot of Bibles have them in the back of them. Mm-hmm. But then yeah. you can get like the real the, fancy ones that are like that's what bigger than the Bible. Use. Yep. <laughs> they're huge <laughs> and very expensive unless you get them on the internet. Like me. <laughs> nice. Thanks, Bible.study. Not a sponsor. 
<laughs> you could be though. Yeah, honestly, us. yeah, be very on brand. So then Pay Donna Donna walks by. She's looking for her headphones, mm-hmm. and Jimmy hasn't seen them. Back when kids used to borrow each other's ear- earbuds. Do kids still do that? I don't know. I guess everyone's just got AirPods now, right? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. But, well, these aren't even earbuds. These are headphones. Yeah. They're it's like 94. Old, yeah, the old plastic ones. Uh-huh. With the weird, like... Foam. Yeah, that's on the outside. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh. Good times. Good Those are so times. uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. I got my first pair of earbuds when I was nine, and it was like, wait, I didn't even know that was an option. I thought you could only put them on your head. You can put them in your ear. Yeah, getting the skull candy ones with the rubber tips and stuff. Those oh, are... no, I had the, oh, my first pair of earbuds was the absolute worst. What were they? They Remember? were just the ones that came with my MP3 player. Oh, okay. And they were kind of like the old iPod style ones, and mm. I just don't have the ears for that. Yeah. And so I I only threw them out like a year ago. You you do astonish me with how uh, how long you can maintain earbuds without killing them or losing them. I also just, like, I have a pair of earbuds that is, like, the pair I buy. Mm-hmm. And I just try and keep an unopened pack in my drawer. That is true. Yeah. And they're, like, the Philips ones, right? They're... They are Panasonic. Oh, they're Panasonic. They're just the ones I found that fit best. And they're cheap. And I like them. And that's been Earbud Corner. So yeah, so Donna's looking for her headphones, mm-hmm. and she is, and then she just takes some time to vent about her frustration with George always using yeah. stories about her during the sermons. Yep. Um, and Jimmy's like, oh, well, like, I was reading, and it says, like, that's, like, a typical way to, like, start. Yeah. Um, but, that like, he'll grow out of it eventually, and Donna's like, oh, yeah, Jimmy's like, you just gotta kind of bear with him for a while, and Donna's like, okay. Cool, thanks, Jimmy, and leaves. And Lawrence is like, oh, look at you, man. You sounded like your dad there. And Jimmy's like, okay, I guess I will be a preacher. Yeah, well, I think I want to be a preacher. Great, great. And then we get, uh, the next scene is Donna and Jack at a school lunch. Um, And this dynamic is pretty interesting. They're they're flirting and everything. Um, It's it's Mm -hmm. very funny because, again, we... I was looking at the wiki, and they they mention modesty is the best policy, which is obviously an episode we've covered before. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's k- kind of funny. Jack sounds like a grown man. Jack does not sound like he's in high school. I mean, granted, yeah. his voice probably dropped early and whatever. You can yeah. you can excuse that there are people that sound like adults in high school. Yeah, I don't I don't know what age. Um, My guess I guess Jack's like seventeen, and Donna's like sixteen, maybe. Like you're saying in universe, yeah, in universe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know what age Donald Long is at the recording of this, but yeah, mm-hmm. he does. He just sounds, he sounds older. Um, but and, well, and I think it probably plays to what you were saying about them kind of aging Donna down a little bit for this episode. Yeah, she does. She doesn't come across as quite as mature, but she's also in like a crappy situation. Mm-hmm. Um, this is uh the last ap- episode that Jack is in until which is, the Triangle Web. Right, which, sure. Yeah, I mean, whatever. Yeah, it, it counts. Whatever. Hey, they're married in real life. Let's marry them in the show. How many times can I make that joke? Yeah. I should I should cut it from this episode. I think I made it last episode. Maybe. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe they missed it the first time. And by <laughs> they, I mean the I think I've made it before, though. Probably. <sighs> I forget just, things I, all the I time. Just, I'm, I'm bitter about it. So I, I, I also would like to point out that this is a fun period of the show in which we have two Jacks. We have Jack Allen and Jack Davis. Oh, yeah. Nice. One of the few repeating names. Right. Like, I, I always appreciate it when a show does that mm-hmm. and doesn't call attention to it or make it a plot point. Mm. Because I feel like that is such a like, old sitcom trope right well like that's that's the only way you ever have two characters with the same name is for it then to be a point you know, like a the, who's on first type right. thing right. yeah or like you call one like tall john and the other one john <laughs> like skinny john right like it's yeah it's just becomes like a weird yeah yeah 
a weird thing. And so I'm, I'm glad that it also like maybe that's why they wrote Jack Davis off. Maybe it was just because he was an adult. Who knows? But he is he ceases to be be around after this episode, which is a bit of a bummer because we I mean, really I'm, liked I'm, his I'm, character. I'm into I'm into the Donna Jack thing. Yeah, me too. I think Jack is a bit of adult this episode, but I think. Well, and like, general, I don't think that anybody could be as good to Donna as I would, you know, presuming like we were the same age and it wasn't like literally illegal like it is now. But I say love you. I mean, I'm not bitter about it. For what it's worth, the voice actress is is older than you. So. True. <laughs> hey. And probably married. I could change this romance to real life. <laughs> yeah, that's what we want. We want our fictional character fantasies to manifest onto the actual actor playing them. Yep. That's that's definitely the move. Not voodoo that's not at all. Problematic, <laughs> even slightly. All right. So, yeah, he uh, so he sits down with Donna at lunch mm-hmm. and compliments her on her presentation. And she's like, oh, yeah, yours was good, too. And he's like, I, I didn't, didn't give that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was really funny. And then he's like, he's like, what? What's up with she's like, Jimmy's wearing a tie. Isn't right. He? Yeah. She, yeah. He like points out that Jimmy's wearing a tie. Yeah. And Donna's like, oh, yeah. He also like blessed me at breakfast. Yeah. And Jack's like, did you sneeze or something? He's, she's like, no. He just said, like, and I bless you, Donna. Yeah, no, uh, well, no, he, like, asked me to pass the sugar or something. Like right. That. He's like, bless you. Yeah. Which is something I would say, actually. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> and then Jack's like, oh, yeah, your family is so weird. You mm-hmm. know, all those stories yeah. that your dad tells on Sunday about you. Like, I wouldn't call that necessarily normal that you wanted a, uh, what is it? Did you wanted a phone extension in your your own phone line in your room when you were six? I would, yeah. And then what? What a weird story to bring up. It's just it's so it's it, it makes Jack look so bad. Yeah. And like I know what he's trying to do here too, so I can sympathize with it. It just makes it more painful. Though. Right. Mm-hmm. But he's like he he's like talking about like the weirdness of her family and like laughing about these stories from when she was a kid but then he's also trying to be like yeah but like you grew out of it and stuff see it's which fine. is just like it's really tough yeah I, yeah it's a bit of a bummer but but it also feels real oh it's no, not 100%. bummer where i'm like oh this is poorly written it's a bummer in like i'm like man teens do be like that don't yeah. they yeah <laughs> Teenage boys kind of suck. Yeah, they do. Um, I'm so, 20. I can say that now. Ha ha. Oh, look at you, Mr. Mature Man. No, I just made it on the other end. <laughs> uh, then, uh, then we go to the house mm-hmm. where Jimmy comes to Donna and asks her about that story about forgiveness. Um, yeah. Asking about one of the parables. And... Uh, Donna's like, I don't know, ask dad. And Jimmy's like, well, I'm trying to do this thing on my own. And I don't know what a concordance is to be able to look this up, (laughs) even though I have one in my room. Um, And uh, and then he also asks her for markers because he's going to do transparencies for his lesson. Yeah. Oh, boy. Throwback to transparencies. Transparencies. Those are great. I love it when the teachers would, like, lick their thumb to, like, wipe away stuff. Oh, Mm -hmm. great. And it wouldn't go away. It'd just smear it. Yeah. Dude, that, it used to be our, uh, back when your dad would lead worship for yep. the kids, Yep. we'd have transparencies with the lyrics on them. Yeah. Did anybody ever, like, write anything funny on there? I don't like As a so. prank? Oh, man. Opportunities missed. Yeah. What a bummer. Um, I feel like we wouldn't be able to get away with any of it. Jimmy no. then reveals, so yeah, he's doing transparencies about, like, the history of of he's going Rome, way in. and then Jimmy goes way in right, on this lesson. On his lesson about the Good Samaritan. Yeah, this is like Drew Huber prepping for an episode of our show. Exactly. Excellent joke. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, he also. Don't you understand? You don't need to work that hard. <laughs> he then he then is like, yeah, but we love it so much. Oh, thank yeah. you, Drew. Yeah. Um, I know you're not listening. Uh, well, I mean, maybe. No. no, um, no, no and way. then he uh, he uses a, uh, he, he tells Donna he's going to use that story about her making brownies and getting yeah, when she food was food poisoned. Yeah. <laughs> she made brownies when she was eight and everybody had to get their stomach pumped, which 
How quickly did they eat these brownies that they didn't realize that they were bad? And also, how were they bad in the I'm way that they did? I'm just imagining they had, like, gravel in them. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, I made them completely normally, except for we were out of oil, so I used dish soap. <laughs> <laughs> Like, it's got the same consistency. That yeah. checks out. Yeah. Nothing will stick. My sister drank dish soap when she was little on accident. Is that a thing that kids do? Probably. I mean, I it looks so. pretty. It does. It does. And thankfully, it was all natural, so she didn't die. There Seriously. you go. This is the reason to keep all natural stuff in your house. Yeah. <laughs> also, remarkable. If you ever I didn't wanted drink to more drink chemicals soap. as a child. <laughs> If you're ever if you're looking to drink soap, just go buy the all natural stuff. Then you're good. Yeah. Uh, did you ever eat kids' toothpaste? I don't think so. Oh man. See, I would never eat the regular toothpaste because I knew that right. I couldn't. But then whenever my mom would be like, "Oh, there are children. I'll get them children. Uh, children's yeah. toothpaste." I just open up the tube and squeeze it right oh, into my mouth. Ew. It tasted yeah. good. My brother. It my brother like ate candy. chapstick. Wow. That's. I wanted to, but it then was I was would... like M M&M and M chaps chapstick too. That doesn't sound as good. I think I could. <laughs> I think I could probably eat some coconut chapstick if I tried really hard. All right. Well, how about uh, pomegranate? How about key lime? You want to go eat some? I'm not gonna eat your chapstick, but I would smell it to see if it was something. <laughs> oh, it, it I is. Could. It is sealed. Oh, unfortunate. But yeah, yeah. I, I, the segment of the show where Andrew just eats chapstick on air. <laughs> It would be great. It would go great in my stomach. Yeah. Maybe that fixes all my biological issues. Yep. That That's the thing you were missing. <laughs> we then, yeah, Donna, then we get like a nice like little, I don't know, feel, hey, real sibling moment where Donna flips out on Jimmy for saying that he's going to use her as, with the brownie illustration. As yeah, As he no. like runs off. And he knows he's like poking the bear and it's, it's fun. No, no, it's so much fun. Then it's Jimmy explaining Roman history to a bunch of like sleeping children. Yeah, and they like, you can kind of hear that the, the sleeping kicks in later. And uh, it's, yeah. it's funny. It's also tough because I, I gave lessons as a kid and it was hard because like you get really excited and really nervous about it. And then... The minute you get up there and the minute you're done, you think, oh, when I don't care, these kids don't care. <laughs> like, Right. It also, it, it, I was like, never once have I seen, like, a bunch of kids be put to sleep by a lesson. Usually they just get restless mm-hmm. and amped up. And mm-hmm. if you're doing, like, a long lesson, they're just, like, running around the room yelling. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's not like, oh, they're quiet and bored. Like, when children are bored, they get antsy yeah when children are bored they start like physically assaulting each other (laughs) right (laughs) depending on what classroom you're in and if there are a bunch of lawrences they might actually right if they're all named lawrence then they're probably (laughs) more likely to to assault each other yeah um and then jimmy runs gets sick (laughs) yes jimmy gets uh, the signal that he is out of time Mm -hmm. as he hasn't even gotten to the good samaritan yet yeah (laughs) and he asks for questions, and Lawrence is like, is Mr. Grant going to be back next week? Jimmy's like, yeah. And he's like, does that mean you're not teaching us again? And Jimmy's like, I don't know. And he's like, well, we know uh, like a weekend ahead of time. Jimmy's like, probably. He's like, all right, great. Yeah. It's like, wow. It is brutal. That is tough. Mm-hmm. And poor Jimmy's just trying his best. I know. And he also went so hard. Yeah. Then George is preaching. Mm-hmm. and oversteps his boundaries yes quite um he, he he for a sermon illustration uses not something from when he, one of his children were a kid but something for a, from a couple weeks ago involving donna crushing on a boy yeah why I guess plot convenience for the episode and whatever but why yeah i mean it's he's, it's he's really still trying to figure out his thing and hey man i can't say anything i do you remember when i the first time i taught a sunday school lesson i was youth group and i was in seventh grade and i was talking about loving your family and i was trying to cover my tracks because i was getting ahead of myself and i made a joke about foster care in front of kids that were in foster care and i didn't know it so, like, I get it. <laughs> I get it, George. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes foot just goes in mouth. Especially when your name's Andrew Sabo. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, if, if your name's Andrew Sabo, it, it should always be there. 
And that's Despite, not a foot fetish thing. No, no, it's it's actually very unfortunate because I'm not flexible at all, so it's a lot of pain. <laughs> so yeah, and Donna is sitting next to her mom and is mortified, and Mary is like not sympathetic at all. Yeah, and it's really a bummer. Oh, she's like Mary, or it's yeah. Donna's definitely in the right here, and that is the frustrating thing. Yeah, so it's. It's then Jack coming up to Donna after the sermon and yeah. being like, oh, I was at that banquet. Mm-hmm. Ha, 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 ha. You couldn't have been talking about me, could have you? Wink, wink. So when hint, I was listening to hint, this, hint. Jack, so Jack already has a crush on her, right? Because modesty is the best policy happened yeah. already. And that yep. made it pretty clear that there was feelings there. Right. So Jack is probably feeling flattered. Yeah. He, he, he liked her. In those clothes, but for all in the that, wrong reasons. In, in that dress. That dress. <laughs> that dress. Oh, my Lord. I almost forgot. Calling back to 2019 when we covered that episode. <laughs> um, But, yeah, that's weird. I know. Um, shh, Don't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> we can't remember. <laughs> don't remember. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's just... Right, it's Jack, Jack, right, it's definitely, like, into her, he's probably flattered by this thing, but it is this weird thing of, like, oh, he, yeah, now found out that she was staring at him the yeah, entire yeah, yeah. banquet. Yeah, and then they talk about, like, when they're gonna see each other, it's this, like, really awkward flirting mm-hmm. moment, and they're like, when are we gonna, you know, is yeah. it youth group that night, presumably, well, or? so, no, I think, I think that there are church services morning and night. Okay. I don't know why, but Jack references the the phone story as being one that George told Sunday night. Maybe mm. George runs the youth group. That would but make they, sense. But they also talk about, like, you know, coming back to church tonight and seeing each other there. That 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 would make sense. I'm I'm willing to uh, believe in this canon that their youth group is on Sunday nights and the same pastor preaches both. Yeah. Especially if, you know, Pastor Reverend is in the hospital with a stroke. Right, exactly. So, yeah, and then he says, uh, the they go out on the line, I'll be looking at you, I mean, for you. Yeah. Uh, which is really funny. And then we get Mary and Jimmy and Donna and George back at the house. Yep, and George and- is stoked. He's like, let's have a barbecue today was the best. And Donna's like, I want to eat in my room. And Jimmy's like, I don't want to eat. Yeah. <laughs> and so Mood. they divide and conquer. And Mary goes to talk to Donna. Yeah, we get um, a great conversation. Which we do, but I also feel like George should have gone to talk to Donna. True. It's weird. I don't know why they had to split, split it up, up this way. By, I mean, it's the problem of... is they both need to talk to George because Mary is barely a character. That is actually the real problem. That is <laughs> that is problem number one. Um. Could we give Mary some more? Yeah. So Mary Mary tells, um, basically is like... Tell, the, tell like your dad we, how you're feeling. Right. Tell your dad how you're feeling. Like, she immediately knows why Donna is upset, despite mm-hmm. having no sympathy for her earlier. Yeah. Um, and it's just like, yeah, like you got to talk to your dad about this. He's, like, he's trying this out this is new for him yeah. he's telling all these stories because like he loves you guys and he wants to talk about you um well and he's also awkward and uncomfortable and if yeah. you don't know what to say it's easy to talk about tell stories that you know and uh, that, right. that that lines up pretty well however i george is definitely pretty in the wrong here because yeah. as my dad would say like Who's the adult and who is the 16-year-old? <laughs> right. Like, yeah, like he, one of you is supposed to not do this. Right. He crossed. He, I think he's, I think he's fine. Like, I think there's more, sim- like, you can have more sympathy for George mm-hmm. when he is telling stories about his kids as children. Mm. And they can distance themselves from them. And, like, Donna still could have a conversation with him at that point and be like, hey, I don't really like that. And George could dial it back a bit. Mm -hmm. When he crosses the line and tells something about a crush he had a couple weeks ago, then he's entirely in the wrong. Yeah, he just... Like, there's no no more, like... He bungled it. There's no more, like, push and pull there. He just needs to stop. Yeah. And so then we get George and Jimmy talking about Jimmy becoming a pastor. 
and uh, yeah, and kind of you know Jimmy couches George up about the conversation that he had and kind of the pressures that he's been feeling. Um, it, very interesting. In my note just kind of making like if there is a villain in this episode, it is the busybody lady that pressures yeah. uh, pressures Jimmy into the ministry. Yeah, and. George is like, so wait, so like, you didn't want to be a preacher. Yeah. So why did you think you should be? Mm -hmm. And he was like, you know, he explains the conversation and things like that. And then George kind of corrects him in a very, very good way. The best line of this episode, don't confuse God's call with people's People's expectations. expectations. Yeah. So good. So huge. Oh my word! Let's talk about setting healthy boundaries. Why? Why Woo-hoo! was? Why did I not re-listen to this episode before? Like, so, like, my yeah, this is something I've experienced in my own life. Me I too. Was, <laughs> yeah, I think we both have a similar story here, which is just like being like the model kid in youth group who, like, everyone was like, oh, this person is like really like they they've got they're in a good place and they're like on the ball and whatever and like so we should give them you know we need to place more responsibility on them and whatnot yeah and Mm -hmm. the natural path at 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 our time was like when you were a junior in high school if you were one of like the elite youth group kids which Mm -hmm. is a stupid thing to exist to begin with but that's not the point Mm -hmm. if you're one of those elite student kids you go back and you teach the junior high rather than doing your own stuff and it was, and I did that because that was just that the was expectation. What you did. Yeah. That, yeah, that's why that I did was it. the thing you did. And I was like, well, it's the thing you're supposed to do, and it's furthering God's kingdom. So like, it must be good. And I went back and I did it, and it wasn't good for me or for those students. There were moments that were good, but yeah. overall, that was a really bad time for me. And I like, it's something that I'm like, I should not have been like i should not have signed up for that but i also shouldn't have felt the like i wish i hadn't felt the pressure to do that or like oh this is just the thing you do so i'm going to yeah and so just that line of like don't confuse god's call with people's expectations just immediately rang true to me where i was like oh yeah i have been guilty of doing that especially well and like within the church microcosm there's so much of that like right. just people the, the people who give the most are then the ones who get asked to do more yes exactly and like i when because we it's about a volunteer this... organization like that's mm-hmm. just how it has to work well and like, like i was reckon like like when i talked about this before being like i was in a gifted program and stuff like that like i've had people telling me that i was a leader or had leadership skills since I was in, like, second grade, which is ridiculous now that I look at it and I'm like, uh. But I, I genuinely think that that has a lot to do with, like, when people tell you that as a kid. And then I grew up in the church and the church was like, oh, you've got these things. Like, we want to develop that. But it's good. And I grew up really, like, I have, a, I think that I'm pretty good in social situations as far as like meeting different types of people and things like that. Um, But I definitely missed out on some of that personal development because a lot of the emphasis was put on how are you serving and Mm -hmm. like everybody has to be doing their part and everybody has to be doing it. And it's like as a kid that is just trying to figure out everything like any other kid, you don't need all that extra pressure and like, I felt honored to be in that position and I felt ungrateful yes. for not wanting it at times. Like, yeah. like I wasn't, I didn't really have a choice right. and it I, wasn't like I, I vilified the people that were asking me to do it because I thought that they were just doing it. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's hard. I think it's, it's hard to do like it well. It's, yeah. It's just, and like, I get why that, I get why in like a normal church scenario that pressure is felt whether it's not it's intended by people i think like this episode is very clear of like we're gonna use miss jeffrey's like as a straw man to be yeah. like look this is like this is bad but it does like hit on a bigger issue that i think is really tough to talk about and know kind of what to do there 
Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, because then it's like you want to serve and you want to do that. But for me, even just saying it out loud, I think it comes back to healthy boundaries. Mm. And like, yeah. number one, more than anything, if you want to get children involved in things and if you want to bring people involved, like you have to establish healthy boundaries as far as what are you willing to give to this? How much are you willing to give to this? And what does that look like? And if you yeah. can set that out and create healthy healthy boundaries that aren't overextending yourself or putting unrealistic expectations or putting you in compromising positions as best mm. you can, you know, I think that collaborating in that way, and I don't say that to talk down on anybody that gave me those opportunities because – I don't think that I would be on this podcast if I had hadn't been pushed as much as I was as a child. Like I don't, I have no clue who I right. would be if. Yeah, no, absolutely. If I, I think about that a lot too. Yeah, if I hadn't had that kind of, you're a leader. You talk about things shoved down my throat right. ever since I was a little kid. Yeah. Yeah. So, so then, then the episode kind of goes out on this. George gathers up the family for for dinner and kind of practices his sermon. Um, yep, which he, yeah, does well. Like yeah, it's just yeah. it's just this real short blurb, but he Knowing talks that. about his family in like a good anecdote, and he interjects to apologize to Donna, which couldn't quite tell if we're supposed to read that as him like intuitively doing that mm-hmm. or like mary having passed that information on to him mm. but either way i really appreciate that apology from him yeah and that he's like yeah like i'll try and get your permission yeah for doing this in the future yeah well and and again and he kind of relates it to knowing them personally and intimately and like it's a good moment because it it definitely shows his human side as well which is good yeah and it's a really good way for the episode to go out. Yeah. Um, and then, well, the episode actually goes out. That's right. <laughs> How can we forget? Mary's gender reveal, which we don't get to hear because of the play. <laughs> and then Chris reacts. Oh, my gosh. To not being able to hear it, which I think is really funny. Yeah. I was, I, that caught me off guard because I was like, I forgot that the Odyssey still did that. And especially at this era or this time. Mm-hmm. I know they did it in Novacom and stuff like that. But yeah. this is not that high of stakes for Chris to be like, oh, what's going to happen? Yeah. But but who knows? Also, my Chris impression. So spot on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One other thing that I don't think we've ever talked about before, but it stuck out to me here um because so the on the wiki they have the episode summaries Mm. up until episode i think like 370 all of those summaries are ones that were written by focus yeah for the complete guidebook and then since then they've been crowdsourced Mm -hmm. like people write their own the thing that makes that interesting is just some of like the weird things that come when, like, the writers of the show are mm-hmm. writing what the episode summaries. Yeah. Including this one in which, uh, when talking about uh, the George using Donna as an example at the banquet, the, uh, the guide writes, George describes how Donna made goo-goo, goo-goo eyes, eyes at a boy <laughs> during an award ceremony the family attended for Jimmy. Donna is irate. <laughs> goo goo eyes. Goo goo eyes. And then and then it ends on the line, it's not easy being a preacher's kid. Written by a preacher's kid? Which is like it's That's worth fine. knowing. I wonder. What? Is McCusker a or uh, Marshall Younger or McCusker or either of them? I don't think so. No, because they talk about the fact that they... Look, McCusker talks about the fact that he had to do research oh, okay. to for this whole series. Yeah. So I would assume not. But it is just... It's that's like a the, weird, like, hey, here's our moral, I guess. Goo-goo I don't eyes. Know, <laughs> goo-goo eyes. I haven't thought about goo-goo, making goo That's like a... There's a scene in Hercules where uh, his sidekick mentions that hercules gives goo goo eyes that's the only thing i can think of that that has actually been used <laughs> gotcha i was just thinking about iris by the goo goo dolls oh i mean because iris eyes goo 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 it's a pretty one to one here <laughs> goo goo equals goo goo yeah 
Oh boy, well, this has been a great episode. It, it really has been. I, I I liked it. I liked it as well. I I liked what it had to say. I honestly, the writing for this family is pretty good, with mm-hmm. the exception of Mary. But yeah. there's nothing new there. Mary's just not given enough to do. But otherwise, we're in pretty good shape. And hey, at least they didn't make any jokes about her being pregnant this episode. Hey, at least there's that. That's such a win. <sighs> and, uh, do you have yeah. anything to plug this I week? Got nothing to plug, Andrew. I'm going to plug peace. <laughs> I like peace. I'm here to support peace. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. All right. And with that being said, we will be back next week to talk about episode 294, Unto Us, A Child Is Born. Bye, guys. Bye. Wat Fam Chalk Pod is a presentation of the Lidditz Podcast Co-op. This show is a fan podcast and has no official affiliation with Adventures in Odyssey or Focus on the Family. As such, the copyright is ours under Creative Commons. Follow the podcast at Wadfam Chalk Pod on Twitter and Instagram, or email us at wadfamchalkpod at gmail.com. A Call for Reverend Jimmy was hosted by Dylan Weaver and Andrew Sabo and edited by Dylan Weaver. And I'm Nathan Haverstick. Hoping you'll join us again next time for more of the Wad Fan Chalk Pod.